Hello and welcome to ModB.com's Stanislaw Football Weekly, an inside look at all things football in the Modesto area. And now for your hosts, Joe Cortez and Brian Vanderbeek. Hi everybody and welcome to Stanislaw Football Weekly for another week of the high school football season. I'm Brian Vanderbeek. This is prep editor Joe Cortez. And we'll start right off looking at a couple of last week's games. And I covered the Holy Bowl, Central Catholic yes. at St. Mary's. It wasn't real close. Uh, St. Mary's pulling away to a 47-27 victory. Central Catholic is going to be able to run the ball. Uh, Reggie Bland, Matt Ringer, very effective in that huge line, and they were effective early running the, running the ball, moving the ball rather easily on the Rams. Uh, but the Rams' speed caught up to them, a couple missed tackles, uh, forces Central Catholic to pass. Central Catholic is not good at passing the ball right now. That's the bad news. The good news is that they may not have to pass the ball the rest of the season between with that line, with the schedule they have coming up. They should be able to run all the way to the Division Four section title and maybe another spot in the small schools game. They lost twice last year in the first four weeks of the season and then went to the bowl game and won it. No reason to think they can't do it again this year. Yeah, they already have the big win against Placer. Uh, like you said, they can run Ringer yeah. and Bland. And uh, I think Donovan Townsend adds an element to that team that wasn't there last year. Yeah, he certainly can pull the ball down and run. His passing needs to get better. He needs to really just get more in sync with his receivers, which wasn't there last week. St. Mary's found out very early it could cover Central's receivers man-on-man, -man, allowed them to pack the box and, and make it a little bit more difficult for Central Catholic to run. They still ran for 260 yards, sure. had a pretty good running game, but it just wasn't enough against St. Mary's. Uh, easily the best team Central's going to play this year. Uh, a couple teams had big debuts. They didn't play week zero and had week one games. And, Ripon uh, Christian, yeah, sixty-nine to zero over Elliott Christian and mm -hmm. Houston, thirty-four to zero over Waterford. Yeah, uh, Ripon Christian, uh, yeah, the big win last week. Uh, but they get the rivalry, the in-town rivalry. They say those, those boundaries of those schools actually touch Ripon and Ripon Christian, and the game is played every year at uh, the Ripon High Field. Ripon Christian's the home team, but they'll still sit on the visitor side per an agreement they have with Ripon. And uh, they came to those agreements a few years ago. And the schools actually worked together very well uh, in putting this, this, this game together. Uh, one of the things, this, this team, one of the, the agreements they have this year, Ripon Christian's numbers are way down. They only have 23 right. players on the varsity of those 23. Maybe 16 or 17 can actually play. Uh, the numbers are also down on, on Ripon Christian's junior varsity team. And because of that, uh, they don't want to expose them to injury or having to play too much. So that game now is at Ripon High, 7 o'clock, a single game Friday night, uh, just a varsity game only, uh, Ripon and Ripon Christian. Another thing about Ripon Christian, too, and they've had football now for eight or nine years, I believe, waiting for it to really take hold among the, I want to say, the old guard at Ripon Christian, there's always a little bit of a resistance there between the old, old guard really getting behind the football program. Now, I know they had plans for an athletic complex, sports field complex out of Ripon Christian. That would include a football stadium. Now, uh, I understand now that, that that might be put on hold, although they mm -hmm. have a meeting uh, Monday at Ripon Christian to discuss that further. Uh, but Houston also had a pretty, uh, pretty good debut last week. Yeah, 34-0, to zero, like we said, over, over Waterford. They still have Denaire, Bret Hart, and Somerville mm -hmm. on the schedule, and it's looking like they're going to be 4-0 when they match up with Escalon on October 4th. Now that used to be a real big rivalry. Oh, I remember. Parts. And it's uh, lost some of its zip uh, recently, but uh, that would be real nice to have that game be a meaningful one again. Yeah, Houston's been down for a couple of years and they're, uh, like, they're probably the TVL favorite as we look at it at right now. I think so. Now you were at the Merced Downey game last week. I was. Yeah. Uh, not a good outing for Downey. Yeah. But a good one for Merced. Merced uh, won 43-6. And uh, they got a 100-yard performance from, uh, from their big running back, Chris Turner-Jackson. Uh, their quarterback, Tyrone Williams, had 250 yards passing in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 37-0 at halftime. They went to a running clock. Uh, everything they did turned out right. Now, last week we talked about uh, Modesto Metro Conference starting 5-2 and two in their first week. Now, three of those teams, Bayer, Modesto, and Gregory, are all 2-0 and o going into week three. That's right. Bayer got a big win over Golden Valley. Uh, got another 100-yard performance from sophomore running back Jay Green. That's two for two in his varsity career. Mm -hmm. And linebacker Dennis Orzakowski had another pick six. He's two for two. So uh, they've got a nice thing going. There. 
just uh, coach Jeff Russell. Another interesting thing with the MMC this week and with the opening of Gregory Stadium this week. This is the first time, and I've been doing this for, I've been back in the area for 17 years now. First time I can remember five MMC teams getting to host this week uh, on the same weekend. Now, Modesto hosts Pittman at Downey on Thursday. Gregory hosts Bear Creek uh, on Thursday at the Gregory Field. That's right. Uh, Byer hosts Tracy at Gregory on Friday. Uh, Johansson on its own field, which I guess is Modesto City Schools field number two, <laughs> uh, hosts Central Valley and Jaquan Gardner on Friday. And uh, Enox hosts Turlock at Downey on Friday in a game that's going to be a little bit emotional. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Enox has been roughed up twice this season by two yeah. CCC foes. They've got another one in a very good Turlock High team. And it's going to be an emotional game, like you mentioned. They're going to they're gonna honor their... Uh, the, the two students who, uh, who died this year, and that figures to be a really uh, emotional game for them. So, you know, they've got a lot to overcome. Yeah. Well, looking ahead at other games that are going on this week, Central Catholic finally gets a home game. We talked about them there. They're at Pl Placer and a big win there, and then a loss at St. Mary's as they host a McClymans in a rematch of last year's NorCal Small Schools. That's right. Uh, Football final, actually the small, actually the Division Four final, and then they played in the small school state bowl. Uh, Central won that game 42 to 12 at Lincoln last year, and I covered that game. One thing I remember is the McClymans coaching staff coming on the field mm -hmm. before the game yeah. and saying, "Oh, Central hasn't seen speed like ours. Hasn't seen speed like ours." <laughs> Opening kickoff, Ray Vega goes back, retreats to the five, fumbles, looks up, fumbles, looks up. McClymans players are coming at it. He picks it up. And talk about speed. He outruns the entire McClyman's team in front of the McClyman's bench to score on the <laughs> opening kickoff of the game. And that kind of a negated speed after that. McClyman's very talented. Uh, not a lot of uh, discipline last year, mm -hmm. especially line discipline, staying in the gaps on defense, which Central really exploited. New coach at McClyman's. Uh, right. They're 2-0 with victories over Highlands and Ferndale. Uh, we don't know how good those teams are, but... Uh, there should, there should be a better McClyman's team, I would think, than, than last year, but, but uh, time will... we won't get a running clock this year. Uh, yeah, I yeah, hope we don't get a running clock there. Uh, another interesting game this, this week, 2-0 uh, Turlock at Enox. How good can Turlock be? I mean, the, we're talking about Turlock at 2-0. We're talking about Pittman at 2-0. Looking right. ahead way to the end of the season in the Harvest Bowl, that looms even larger as both of these teams look to go 3-0 this week. That's right. Uh, I think we mentioned it last week. You know, just based on what we saw that first week, mm -hmm. the Harvest Bowl looks like it's going to be a really good matchup this yeah. year. That brings us right into the, the predictions for this week. Calaveras visiting Modesto Christian. Modesto Christian beat Chowchilla last week, fifty to nothing. Right. Chowchilla is a pretty good little central section program. Um, are they up this year? Are they down this year? Well, right. It's uh, remains to be seen. But uh, based on that. It looks like uh, Modesto Christian has righted themselves after a week one loss. I'm going to go with Calaveras, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, they've got nearly 40 men on the roster, and they play tough football. Yeah, I'm looking at my prediction sheet here. That's the one I didn't underline. This is a spur-of-the-moment decision. Uh, Calaveras opened uh, by pounding Yosemite 64-21 in a road game. Uh, obviously, Modesto Christian 1-1. One one. Modesto Christian showed an awful lot in... Uh, playing Cardinal Newman really yes. tough in, the, in that opener, too. Great program. Uh, then they're blanking the Chow Chilla shows me what they have on, on defense. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to go with MC at home on this one. And uh, for no other reason is that, you know, I think MC is maybe playing physical than their, more physical than their roster numbers. Yeah, only and, 20 and they, and on they, the and roster. They, and they tend to do that early in the year. Uh, Bear Creek Gregory, what do you think? Well, I just exchanged some texts before we came in here mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Gregory coach Jason McCoy. He said that uh, Bear Creek is coming off a big win over McNair. Right. He's been in the section playoffs the last five years. He calls this the best Bear Creek team in five seasons. But having said that, uh, I like Gregory's running game. They've yeah. got uh, Tyler Janitz should be back after sitting out last week with an injury. Uh, they've got Andrew Nash, Alex Lebanon. All three of those kids are averaging just about 100 yards per game mm -hmm. in that wing T offense. I'm going to go with the running game and Gregory Yeah, I've to got, stay perfect. I've, I've underlined Gregory in this. I just think that's the up-and-coming program in the Modesto Metro Conference, and, and uh, 
they're, they're at home, and yeah. uh, uh, I, I just like their chances in this one. Again, not knowing all that much about, about Bear Creek. Uh, Rippin at Rippin Christian. Um, we talked about this game earlier. Uh, I, I've told Rippin coach Chris Johnson that this really isn't going to be considered a rivalry until Rippin Christian eventually sure. wins this game. And I hope he's still not the coach at Rippon High when it happens, <laughs> because there, <laughs> there might be some some protests there. I, I like Rippon in this game. Uh, Rippon big. Rippon is hasn't given up a point outscoring its opponents was it 96 nothing in the first two games. 93 is it? 93 nothing in the first two games. Uh, I think Rippon Christian scores. They they've got some talent, and I think Rippon Christian scores in the game. But but Rippon should win this pretty easy. You mentioned that talent. Andrew yeah. Brown for them last week had yeah. se- accounted for seven touchdowns. Yeah. Rushed for five. Received for two and threw a touchdown pass, yeah. and uh, that overshadowed overshadowed an effort by Casey Kemper, who yeah. ran for about a buck fifty. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're probably going to score some points, but traditionally this has not been a rivalry that's been close. Mm-hmm. And I like Rippin here. Yeah, Rippin Christian eventually will win this game. I, I, that's a prediction. I'm going out on a limb. Eventually. Eventually, will win this game. Care to say win? No. <laughs> No. Okay. No, no. Some and our, our last prediction is uh, Tracy at Bayer in a game that's going to be at, at Gregory on Friday. Uh, now, Tracy defeated Sierra in the opener and then turned around and lost at Franklin. I understand Franklin's the cl- maybe the class of the public schools in Stockton. Mm-hmm. But uh, so uh, tough one here. I mean, Byers put up a lot of points this year, but I, I just think Tracy might be too big, too fast for the Patriots, and so I'm going to lean towards Tracy in this one. Uh, you may be right, but I'm going to stick with the Patriots. I like what Bill Flesher's doing there. Yeah. I like the kid, the sophomore Jay Green, and I like Dennis O, as they call him, Dennis Orzakowski. Yeah. Uh, let's see if he can keep his little streak going. Well, that's it for the show, except for anything else you want to mention here. Yeah, Jaquan Gardner. Oh, yeah. Central Valley yeah. running back. Yeah. Rushed for 226 yards against Brookside Christian. Yeah. Brings his season total. Uh, well, it, it brings him 1,250 yards away from breaking Lewis Bland's all-time district record. Yeah, something I want to mention here, too. I took a look at the Pittman roster this, this week, and they've got a number 77, a senior lineman, 6'8", 375 pounds, goes by the best football name in history, Bubba McNasty. Okay, so I called Dave Walls. Bubba McNasty, really? I, I gave Dave Walls, actually sent him an email. I said, Dave, come on. You don't really don't have... I said, please tell me you have a kid on your roster named Bubba McNasty. And, and Dave emails back and says, well, we all got to have some fun. And so it was too good to be it true. It was too good to be true. Anyway, that's Stanislaw Football Weekly for this week of the season. This week two, I guess. Zero one two. Zero one two. And third so this, week of games. Third week. Week two. Yeah, how we figured that. Week three of the season, officially week two. For Joe Cortez, this is Brian Vanderbeek saying, hey, just go out and see some high school football this weekend.